everyone, and welcome to Catholic Peekskill. I'm Mary Mancini, and I'm music coordinator and cantor here at Assumption Church in Peekskill. And I am your host this evening for this public access TV show. The focus of this Catholic Peekskill show tonight is our precious pipe organ here at Assumption and very unique to Assumption Church. It's been a very, very important part of our church's history and has been giving inspiration to our masses and our worship services for over 100 years. And with me this evening is our principal organist, Mario Taka, and our organ technician, Mr. Stanton Doherty. And, uh, and by the way, Mario, that was a beautiful, beautiful rendition of Bach's concerto that you played a little earlier on. So come with me now. We're going to go to the console where we're going to meet Mario and Stanton there and tell you a little bit about this precious instrument. So here we are now, we're at the console. This, this is what we call the console, and it's actually the second one uh, that, that has been here, and it's over 80 years old. And, uh, and of course, the pipes which you saw behind me at the beginning of the show, the pipes are the conductors of all those magnificent sounds that you hear. And those majestic pipes have been standing also for over 100 years. So sitting at the console with me, uh, Mario Taka, who is also my husband. Uh, Mario, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you eventually became an organist here at Assumption Church? And I, I know there were several organists before you. Yes. and other organists also as well, mm -hmm. organists that, that play for different worship services and masses right, right. and the uh, organists for the choir and so forth. But tell us a little bit about how you came to be one of the organists here at Assumption. Well, I used to come to this particular church, uh, you know, a number of years ago with my parents. And uh, I always came upstairs to the balcony because I wanted to hear this beautiful organ at that time. And not only I could be close to the sound, but actually I could feel the pipes, that wonderful sound coming from the pipes back there. So I used to sit at the balcony and watch my favorite organist uh, and listen to him. Uh, his name was Howard Preminger. Right. I, re I remember him well because he was choir director as well. Yes, he was mm -hmm. a great organist, really a great individual as well. Uh, and I know you were around in those days too. Yes, I was. Because you were in a choir, you were a soloist already, but I didn't get to meet you and know you personally until a number of years later. So eventually I wind up on at the organ here, and I took Howard's uh, seat. Yeah, and he was he was so, a wonderful organist. And, and I'm still here. Teacher, yes, he was. Yeah, he was great. He was so, great. Um, when we're talking about pipe organs versus we hear electronic organ, well, a lot of the churches today have electronic organs. They're easy. You plug them in and that's about it. The maintenance is hardly anything, of course, if something goes wrong, but they have some excellent sounds. However, there's little or no sign or indication of what I like to refer to as the beating heart. And when we speak about the pipe organ, we can easily compare it to the human body. Unlike the electronic type organs, it's necessary to pay very close attention to that complex internal working of the organ to preserve its heart and keep it in good working order. Having a good relationship with an organ repair person 
And having come in to tune and maintain on a regular basis is really necessary. And left to function on its own over a long period of time, the instrument can easily deteriorate, leaving the masterful organist to use his expertise or her expertise to keep it functioning. Stanton Doherty is with us tonight. Stanton, it's such a pleasure, and I want to say thank you so much for coming in and spending time with us tonight. Uh, I, I'd like to ask you to tell everybody a little bit about your background and about how long you've been coming to Assumption to tune and service our precious organ. Thank you, Mary. I have a bachelor's degree in organ performance from Men uh, Bluffton College, which is a small Mennonite school in Ohio. I came to New York thinking I was going to go to grad school, and I was sitting at St. Anne and the Holy Trinity in Brooklyn Heights one day practicing, and a guy came in to tune the organ, and he said, oh, do you have time to hold keys sometime? And I said, oh, sure. So two weeks later, he calls me up, and I go to work, and I love it, and it turned into my career. It's the only job I've ever had my whole lifetime, and that's the way it happened. And I didn't go to grad school. I liked working taking care of organs better. Actually, the first day I went to work with him, the guy's name was John Randolph. Okay. We tuned the organ at St. Patrick's Cathedral. So that's where I started. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow. And our, our current pastor, Father Esteban Sanchez, he was at the cathedral yes, for, I yes. think, two and a half years. Yes. Nice place to start. What a place to start. What a place it? to start. And we're, we're really blessed to have you. Well, I've learned a lot since then. <laughs> <laughs> and I've known you for a long time and didn't We've know that background. Each, yes, yes. And I've always loved hearing you sing. And you mm. knew that because I would always just rave hearing you sing. Yeah, that's my career. Yes. <laughs> that's <laughs> my career. But um, can you explain um, a little bit about the many moving and stationary parts there are that create these beautiful sounds that come from this organ? I'm happy to. Great. I, can we show people what the console is? And I will explain what it's all about. I know it looks very strange if you don't know what you're doing. So you can see we have, unlike a piano, just one keyboard, we have two keyboards. So we have two keyboards because each keyboard is, contains sets of pipes. Once this section, the bottom keyboard, all the pipes are, are in front and they have the fuller sound. It's called the great division. So when I play with this set, this keyboard, I'm playing the, with pipes that are all out in the open. Now the upper keyboard also has different sets of pipes, but these pipes are inside a box, which has like a Venetian set of shutters on the front. And with my foot pedal, I can open and close it, and it makes the sound louder or softer. Now the box is closed. Now it's open. Closed. Open. So it gives me uh, controlling the volume that way. So that's why we have different keyboards. We also have the pedal, which we have uh, big, bigger notes to, so you can play with your feet, but, uh, and it plays the deeper sounds. So now we have, on the grate, we have different stops. And each stop is, for each key, we have one pipe. So for each set, each rank of pipes, 
we have 61 pipes. All the way up to the top. Mm. 61 pipes for that set. Here's a flute. One flute. Here's another set of pipes. And another flute. So with each stop, we get a different sound. And when you put the different sounds together, you get a uh, you know, vari variety of tones. Our organ here has about 10 stops on the upper keyboard and about nine stops on the bottom keyboard and only one pedal stop. Uh, another thing is we have couplers, which one keyboard will play on the bottom keyboard. Or it will play an octave higher with the swelled swell forefoot or an octave lower with a swell to grade 16. And you put it all together and it just gives the variety of sounds that uh, we make music with as an organist. Stanton, tell everyone how many pipes there are. 1,130. <laughs> <laughs> That is something I can't even imagine. Can you explain how many different families of pipes there are? Certainly. We have every organ, there are only four different sets, families of pipes. The smallest, thinnest set of pipes is a string. A string. It's thinner and gives an edgy sound. So that's our strings, and on this organ we have this set of sight. We have two sets of strings. Uh, the second set of pipes are the flutes. This is a wooden pipe. It could also be made out of metal, but the wood sound is uh, one of our favorites. And this is a flute. This is what it sounds like. And on this organ, we have this flute. And then we have another flute. This is also a wooden flute. And a four-foot flute. And our next set of pipes uh, is the principles. This is the basic foundation organ sound, particular to pipe organs. It's not a sound you get in the orchestra, the diapason or principles. Here's what our diapason, this is the main foundation stop of our organ here. It's the basic church sound. So we have that diapason, then we also have the forefoot. We have a higher pitch principle. And then we have a unique sound called the mixture stop, which for each note, you have three pipes playing, filling out the upper partial harmonics. So when you put it all together, and I'll do it one stop at a time, our eight foot, four foot, two foot, mixture. That's what the organ is all about, adding or taking off stops of different families, combining them and getting different colors. We know we have an idea 
how much work and time you've put in. So tell us, what's next to get this whole instrument, the pipes, everything in 100% working order so that this is the future. This will be our future for our children, the congregants who come here to Assumption. This will be good for another 25, 35 years once you're done. Yes? Well, or am I, I exaggerating? No, I think uh, we, what, what I end up, the work I'm doing should be good for another 50 to 75 years. Wow. Wow. For certain things. Okay, so we're doing something for the future. Completely. Completely, yes. You know, you also have to remember, this organ hasn't changed this, its sound from the day it was built. And so for the last almost 100 years that this organ has been here, for all the worship services, for all the weddings, for all the funeral services, it could, it could be, it is the same sound that you, you got married to, that your grandparents were married to. It's something so wonderful and special to keep this sound alive. Yes. It's a very unique sound by the Fenton Company. It's built in Nyack, New York. And very, there are very few organs left by this builder. And in fact, at the Organ Historical Society, the builder Fenton is listed, but there are no organs listed except for, because of me, this one, which I just registered. Wow. Yes, wow. it's wonderful. Well, I said, didn't I say unique? Unique. This organ is unique to Assumption Church. We're so proud and happy that yes. Father Esteban Sanchez is, has that intense desire to get this work done. It's a wonderful organ, and it, it's a wonderful organ because it was well built by the builder. The pipes are exactly the way they were built way from the original, haven't been changed or messed with, and uh, it's, it has such a rich, full sound. Actually, for many years, I didn't think this organ was anything special at all. But three years ago, I was waiting around for the uh, organist to stop, uh, to get done practicing, and I was downstairs listening to it. And I couldn't get over the sound. Although I hear organs every day of my life, this just sounded like I was in Europe. It sounded so beautiful. It just changed my mind. And it's so funny that even though I've known this organ for over 30 years, tuning here, unless you go down and listen to it, you don't really understand how wonderful it is. It's a I treasure agree. for the city of Peekskill to have. Thank you. Thank you so much. So as we open tonight, we heard the um, beautiful sounds where Mario used different stops uh, on the solo instrumental by Johann Sebastian Bach. And when played as an accompaniment instrument, you'll hear some of the different sounds that are, are for the instrumental pieces, but then when you use it as an accompaniment instrument and you hear a choir or a soloist. So I thought tonight what we would do is give you a little sample of uh, the organ and Mario can uh, come to the console now to accompany me on a hymn that has um, been our favorite, both of us for so long, so we'd like to do this beautiful rendition of How Great Thou Art. Oh 
So tonight, I hope that we've been able to give you some insight into how precious this instrument is here at Assumption Church. And I, at this time, would like to ask you, all of you out there, to help us to continue the work in order to preserve our precious pipe organ. Just a little bit of a brief background. About five years ago, uh, in memory of Priscilla Piccarello, a fundraising event was started to help preserve our organ. And so many donations were made by so many generous people in her memory uh, in this organ restoration fund. And we were able to start the work. And donations kept coming in and are still coming in and in addition, we received uh, other funds from the outside, but above all, above all, with the extensive help and support of our pastor, Father Esteban Sanchez, and his desire to keep this instrument working for so many years, uh, Stanton Doherty was able to complete the first two stages of the work that has tremendously helped um, to improve the sound. Uh, however, we have a long way to go. And tonight, again, we ask you, if you can, donate to this very, very worthy cause. We are looking at a goal of $50,000 to complete the work on this precious instrument. And we're hoping that you will help us do that. Thank you all. You, it's been such a pleasure for us to come into your homes from our beautiful choir loft here at Assumption Church. And I want to give a special thank you to Jim Brooks and Joe Paisano for all the time they have so generously given to Assumption Church especially since the beginning of the pandemic. Without them, we could not have brought masses, services into your homes, which they are still doing, and they stream our Sunday morning, eight o'clock mass, and all the services. So thank you, thank you to Jim and to Joe. And thank you, Stanton Doherty, for being with us tonight. Thank you, Mario Taka. Thank you to all, and we're going to close this evening with Stanton playing uh, a Bach piece. Mario started with a Bach piece. We are closing with a Bach piece. Come Holy Ghost, Lord God. And an interesting note that I want to share before we say goodnight, Johann Sebastian Bach was one of the most famous composers of church music. And inscribed on each composition he wrote for the glory of of God. So thank you all for tuning in. Good night and God bless.